For your viewing pleasure, this broadcast of the Municipal Council Meeting of Alpena is made possible by the funding provided by the City of Alpena. Thank you for your generosity. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Alpena City Council meeting of June 5th, 2017. Call the order, please. Johnson? Here. Nielsen? Nowak? Here. Sexton? Here. Walgora? Here. Uh, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 modifications to the agenda this evening. I have the opportunity to read the minutes from regular session of May 15, 2017 and closed session of May 15, 2017. Any changes? Citizens appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda items are invited to come to the podium to state your name and address for our records. You each have five minutes to address your concerns. This is the only time during the council meeting that you'll be allowed to address council with the exception of anyone here for open comment on the public hearing uh, that's later in the meeting but anything outside of the public hearing please come up to the podium on the consent agenda this evening is a bills to be allowed in the amount of seven hundred and ninety eight thousand eight hundred one dollars and ninety cents B is the approval of a noise variance from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. on Saturday, June 17, 2017 for the 2017 Alpena Blues Festival. And C is one city council appointment for an unexpired term on the Zoning Board of Appeals for three-year term expiring 10-1-17, and that's Kerry Keller. And will we approve the consent agenda as presented? Second. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Nalagora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. <laughs> Kinda of messed her up today, huh? <laughs> All right, no presentations or announcements. I do have a couple of proclamations this evening. First is uh, give a hands to friends affected by cancer day. Whereas Friends Together is a local nonprofit organization supporting local residents dealing with cancer while building partnerships in the community, providing programs and offering services. And whereas Friends Together is concluding its annual fundraising campaign to support local services on June 11, 2017 at the Alpena Bandshell. And whereas Friends Together desires to invite uh, the entire Alpena community to join in the celebration of cancer survivors, caregivers, and families, and remember those who have lost the battle. Now, therefore, I, Matthew J. Walagora, by the virtue of authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Alpena, do hereby proclaim Sunday, June 11, 2017, as Give a Hand to Friends Affected by Cancer Day. And further, I urge all citizens of the city uh, to be encouraged to recognize and support their neighbors and friends who are experiencing <coughs> cancer treatment and show their support to those loved ones who've lost the battle. And Stacy Rosanowski is with uh, some other Friends Together group to come up. Alpena Blues Week. 
Whereas the Alpena Blues Coalition was started in November 2003 for the purpose of furthering blues music awareness and appreciation, and whereas the first Alpena Blues Festival was held in 2004 and subsequent successful festivals have been held each year since, and whereas the Blues Coalition provides a program called Blues in Schools Music Outreach as a way of raising awareness and educating students in traditional American blues music, and whereas events sponsored in the past include uh, blues bands at the Friday Night Downtown Concert Series, blues performers at various venues around town, and fighting hunger in our, hunger in our community, and whereas over the years successful <coughs> fundraisers have been held to support and promote awareness of upcoming blues festivals held every June in the Alpena, at the Alpena County Fairgrounds, this year's festival will be held on Saturday, June 17, 2017. Now therefore, I, Matthew J. Walagora, by the virtue of authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Alpena, do hereby proclaim the week of June 11th through the 17th, 2017, as Alpena Blues Week in Alpena, and urge all citizens to recognize and support the efforts of the Alpena Blues Coalition's 14th Anniversary Blues Festival. Randy, Randy McCauley is here with this group. Okay, next is a public hearing. Rezoning parcel commonly known as 1161 North Bagley Street from B3 Commercial District to planned unit development. Start by uh, opening the public hearing and report uh, by Planning and Development Director Adam Paul. Sure. Thank Sir? Um, North, North Lane Credit Union is, uh, is requesting to rezone uh, 2.53 acres at 1161 North Bagley from B3 Commercial District to PUD planned unit development for the purpose of constructing a new building. They would like to construct their new corporate headquarters in the city of Alpena at that location. They have evaluated many other locations within the city, and they chose this location on Bagley as the best fit. The proposed building would be four stories tall and a total of 58,400 square feet in size, 51,750 square feet above grade. The existing property is vacant with the existing access for Bagley. There are not any known environmental conditions, and Northland Credit Union has 15 locations throughout Northeast Michigan, with the current main office being in Oscoda. The property in question is zone B3 Commercial District, which is designated to provide sites for more diversified business types requiring a citywide general market and or arterial exposure. Surrounding uses include Goodwill Industries, Ambassador Credit Union to the north, the shopping center to the south, R.A. Townsend, a plumbing and HVAC supplier to, and distributor to the west, and Evergreen Cemetery to the east. The B3 district has a height limit of 35 feet for any portion of the building used for living or commercial space. The use in question would be allowed in this zoning district by right. The applicants have requested to construct a building with the top, with the top of the commercial space measuring 54 feet tall. The proposed structure is taller than allowed, and the applicants are requesting to rezone the property to plan unit development or PUD. The proposed plan unit development is designed to encourage um, quality land development and site design outside of the typical zoning standards. The applicant has requested that the preliminary and final site plan review be conducted in one hearing. Staff has reviewed the criteria, and it does seem to fit that criteria. Uh, height requirements are generally in place uh, to protect the public uses from physical effects of an adjacent tall build that an adjacent tall building may have. For instance, uh, there are many commercial zoning districts that directly adjoin residential districts, and allowing a taller building uh, would have a significant impact on the on it could, well, could potentially have a significant impact on an adjacent resident as it may cast residents as it may cast a shadow on the residents, blocking the sunlight or may restrict privacy by allowing direct view of the, um, from the building to their yard. In this instance, the building in this instance, the building is set back away from the adjoining properties and the surrounding land uses are commercial in nature. 
In addition, protecting adjacent uses from the physical effects of tall buildings. Height requirements also in place for aesthetic purposes. Height restrictions attempt to create uniform development patterns. In the downtown, there are not only height limits of five stories, but also minimums of two stories. In the proposed development, the applicants are requesting to construct a four-story building. The existing B3 allows for 35 feet of uh, tall buildings, which would be potentially a three-story building. There is potential. The building could be constructed at the location to meet the existing 35 foot height requirement, but the expanded footprint of the building would impact the amount of parking available on the site, and in order to fit on the site in question, the building size would have to be reduced. <coughs> Several boards and commissions have reviewed height requirements in the past, uh, such as the, the hotel on 23 North, which was proposed, as well as um, in 2003, the, the two eight-story condo buildings in downtown. Both of those were approved. The submitted site plan shows access from Bagley, uh, there is already access to the existing site on that location. A service drive connection for the, from the proposed development to the adjoining shopping center to the south um, would appear to be beneficial as accessing the shopping center from the proposed use would require a left turn onto Bagley. Employees and customers from the proposed development could easily access the restaurants and uses adjoining them without utilizing Bagley Street. I can just kind of give you a hint of what we're dealing with here. Here's the aerial view, here's the location we're looking at, here's the strip mall to the south, and we have one of the streets to the north, and there's their existing drive, which would be shifted, I think, slightly north, not far, and we're talking about potentially adding a service drive between these two uses right in this general vicinity. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, it would not appear to have an uh, impact on any needed parking for the proposed development, and would only impact what is shown as future parking. Also, uh, impacted parking for the existing shopping center um, to the south would not appear to be heavily utilized at this location. The future land use map in the comprehensive plan calls for this area for general business, and this, um, this use would be consistent with that plan. Uh, site plan submitted appears to meet the standards um, required PUD. All standards of the B3 district would be met with the exception of height and parking stall numbers. There is potential to add additional parking on the south side of the lot which would appear to meet uh, the requirements, but would not appear to be initially necessary. Planning Commission did, a vote, um, did vote to approve the project five to zero with one abstention at their May 16 meeting. Uh, the request was approved with the following conditions. A service drive design be designed to connect the new development to the shopping center to the south and constructed if the adjacent property owner allows it. Uh, bicycle parking is added, to the, is added as required by the zoning ordinance and additional landscaping was added uh, to the site due to the, like, due to the lack of landscaping in the parking area. Um, staff also recommends the uh, approval of the rezone from B3 to PUD with the conditions listed and would request that the City Council approve the attached ordinance revision. <coughs> the applicants are present and they do have um, some boards to put up um, with some with a, with the a building and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to talk about that. But other than that, I'm more than happy to have any questions. Okay, thank you, Adam. A quick question while your map's up. Certainly. The wooded area that's directly east of the building, who's the right. property owner? Is that? That is actually uh, owned by the cemetery. Oh, it's part of the cemetery. Yep. Okay. We're looking to utilize for that purpose. I'll open it up to public comment. Anyone that would like to. And I don't know if, um, I think what we'll do is ask you to be part of the council discussion. Does that make sense to you? Normally they have. Is it public up? This now? Is they do their presentation, then mm -hmm. you have anybody else. Oh, OK. Either for So you're part of the presentation. So I yes. guess that's now. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That'd be the presentation. So this is a public comment now? No. 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 OK. No, it's not. No. That would be after the presentation. Uh, we did this rendering at night, that's why it's dark. Okay. Looks <laughs> <laughs> good. I've been waiting to use that. While Adam's doing that, my name is Brad Butcher. I'm with SIDOC Group Architects and Engineers for the project for Northland Credit Union. We're based in Gaylord, and this project project's being managed out of Gaylord and uh, produced by several of our offices throughout the state. Uh, 
Uh, ahead of the May meeting, we presented uh, our, our plan to the Planning Commission uh, for review, and then, of course, presented to the Planning Commission itself uh, a, a couple of weeks back. And uh, the plan was approved, uh, conditional on a couple of elements which have been corrected. I'll get these boards out of the way for a second. Um, although it's not identified, there is a bike rack right here. Um, and secondly, the, the condition regarding uh, access from the shopping center to the south is certainly up for consideration. One of the challenges in, is in placing it. If we placed it where it might naturally be, where there's a two-way traffic aisle, we're concerned a little bit that our one-way traffic out of the drive-through on the north side of the building would have some interference by folks thinking they could continue on to uh, uh, Goodwill. Uh, the traffic around the building is one way on that north side in order to meet stacking requirements or have enough room for stacking requirements for the drive-through and then the balance is angled parking in a one-way lane. So the suggestion would be that we would move the uh, connector to the shopping center uh, to the south slightly east. Not really the ideal spot for it, but we still don't know if that property owner would like to do that. So it's still on the table for discussion. Uh, we did increase the amount of landscaping uh, uh, per request as well. And then um, I think that was it on the, on the landscape plan. Do we have any questions before I unveil? So <clears throat> we submitted building elevations and some rough sketches as part of the PUD submittal, uh, but now we'd like to share with the community the, um, the renderings of the building. This is the view from the southwest, so we'd be coming in uh, the driveway here and looking along the south side of the building. Again, it's a four-story building, but it's not four stories everywhere. It does step from three stories up to four stories at certain points to accommodate um, some relief in the building height and perhaps some rooftop space on the northwest corner and the southeast corner. Uh, the elements <coughs> that, in, that included, are included here for materials are glass, uh, masonry, some aluminum grill work to help shade that south side, and some aluminum sunshade uh, above the fourth story windows. Uh, so that's our view from the south west, looking northeast. This is the north side of the building. Again, you can see the third story is stopped for potential rooftop <coughs> terrace up there, and then the drive through is shown here on this view as well. Get a really nice sense of the scale of the building, and it's uh, uh, it's got you know, some northern Michigan warm colors to it. It's nice. The east side of the building, or east end, again that would be this end, <coughs> includes employee access, sidewalks along the parking area, and the narrow east end. Uh, again, the third story uh, stops. And for the rooftop area, and uh, that's the east end. And then lastly, uh, a detailed close-up of the entrance. The entrance is, is tucked back in here. That would be right there. Um, you can see that the first, second, and third stories are set back from the facade of the building. The idea is there is that that entire south side is exposed to sunlight. Let's get some shade. Uh, some relief to the building surface uh, and three-dimensionally uh, make these spaces more comfortable but still presentable with lots of glass. So that's our proposal to the community. Uh, we're currently working with Northland on developing the design further and expect to work our way into construction documents and, and uh, start construction as soon as we can, but that's still the case of that. So, uh, so we appreciate your consideration and uh, we'll answer any questions that I can answer. Pete Desserts, CEO, is here if you have any questions from uh, Northland. Uh, and then get into public comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
So that's the presentation. Yeah. Just want to make sure I follow this correctly. <laughs> All right. I'll open the uh, meeting to public comment. Anyone at all? If you'd like to, please come to the podium. State your name and address for us. Any written comment? Okay, I'll close the public hearing and open for council discussion. Anyone has any questions for Adam or the uh, Brad? Adam, I think the only one that I've got, and I think we've, we've addressed this the last time with the uh, um, Holiday Inn Express, is any concerns from fire? Yeah, and that's something that we did address with the Holiday Inn, because that, that is also a four-story building, though. I think similar scale, but um, to my knowledge, it's not a problem, although Chief Four which is here, no problem. Okay. Answered. Answered. <laughs> that's what I had. A couple quick questions for Northland. When ideally, when would you like to start construction? Oh, is there a from here? Um, ideally, it'd be great to start when the weather would accommodate such activity. Um, unfortunately, we're kind of winding down the season. We're probably looking at doing very little on the site uh, before the end of the calendar year or the end of the building season. We'll likely start in the spring of 2018. And approximately how many employees? Present, probably. We'll get about 45 to 60 employees uh, coming in this move. And this, of course, will allow for growth within the building itself and could see upwards of 100 people working this building. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Good question. Anything else? Looks fine. I don't have any issues at all. I think it's a great plan. Uh, looks good. It'd be a great addition to that whole block area. Drawing some attention. So we'll have the first reading of ordinance number 17-439, an ordinance amending the modification. Keeping council button now. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. He's just got to wait for the camera to get on him. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> an ordinance amending by modification and revising ordinance number 148. Be it ordained by the Municipal Council of the City of Alpena, State of Michigan, as follows. The zoning ordinance of the City of Alpena being ordinance number 148, establishing zoning districts, schedule regulations, and zoning map is hereby amended and revised in the following manner. The zoning classification of the following described parcels hereby changed from B3, commercial district, to PUD, planned unit development. And it's legally described as the par part of the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter, section 21, township 31 north, range 8 east, and is commonly known as 1161 North Bagley Street. And the provisions of this ordinance shall take effect 10 days after being adopted by the Municipal Council and duly published. Very good. Thank you. That's it. And that'll be brought back for second meeting. Okay, meeting. All right. And Council. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. The report of officers tonight is a bid public safety facility copier. Steve Schultz. Oh, on Tuesday, May 30th, the city received an open bid for the public safety facility copier. <coughs> bid specifications were sent to three vendors as well as advertised on the city website. We received three bids. Um, they are as follows as shown on your, in the memo there. Um, we have your when you have your, when you're uh, doing copiers and things like that that have a maintenance plan. You usually evaluate the base bid of the machine, but then you also include in your maintenance because it's usually a 60 month maintenance plan. And the, the maintenance plan includes uh, all the toner that you use and any parts that you need along the way, and, and all that is is paid for already in that maintenance plan and mm -hmm. per usually per copy, per black and white copy, and per color copy. And so we evaluated it that way when I when I got the bids. And uh, the average color in black and white uh, pages were based on city hall usage and reduced by a factor of about 50%. Um, I don't have a good feeling of what they use at uh, public safety simply because we've got an older copier, we've got a color printer, and uh, another machine that kind of do all the work that this copier is going to do. So um, I kind of had to had to pick a number and, and went with it and just applied it across the board evenly to all the, all the machines. Um, the, the low bidder, while well, not the, the total cash price, um, but after you figure in the maintenance, the low bidder was applied imaging. Um, 
and they do have support staff within Opina County, but it's based out of Traverse City. We'd be buying a machine out of Traverse City business, therefore a local bidder's preference kind of kicked into to play here. And we've got the local bidder Miller office machines was within 7% uh, as established in our local bidder's preference. And they were contacted and given the opportunity to reduce their, their base bid by $290.54, which they happily agreed to do. Um, and they will match the It'll match the, the bottom line price of $19,424 um, that, uh, that applied to Imaging Hat. And so they, uh, they agreed to do that, and that'll come off the base price, not the, not the contract price, because their, their maintenance prices have to stay the same. I mean, they can't kind of fluctuate those, but we just changed the base bid, uh, the base machine. So we have that previous experience with Miller Office with the copier here at City Hall. Um, their maintenance program um, has been been spectacular. We like having them. They're very responsive. Um, we, we always have toner in, in stock, and anytime we need it, we call them, and they're here usually same day, if not the day after. Um, so in consideration of the information presented above, um, I recommend as IT coordinator that the city approve the purchase of the copier and a five-year maintenance plan from the local bidder, Miller Office Machines, in the amount of $13,349 um, for the copier, and then uh, the cost of <coughs> roughly Four cents per copy for color, and roughly, um, oh, it's like five tenths of a cent, or five tenths of a uh, yeah, a cent for black copy, black and white copy for maintenance. Um, we've got sufficient funds budgeted for the capital purchase, and then we've got also additional funds budgeted in the maintenance line items for this. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Pretty good, <laughs> pretty good presentation, yeah, Steve. Pretty Nobody's presentation. got a question for you. Yep. So. That's it. You covered everything. So yeah, I certainly don't. That's good. Uh, I imagine what I'd ask about a copier. I move we approve the purchase of copier and five-year maintenance from Miller Office Machines for the added bid prices. Second. Sexton. Yes. Walgora. Aye. Johnson. Yes. Noah. Yes. Excuse me. Thank you, Steve. All right, next, uh, communications and petitions. We have uh, Bicycle Awareness Month. Uh, just as a quick precursor, uh, Rich is going to come and give a brief presentation, but uh, this was a project uh, kind of spearheaded a little bit from my perspective from Tim Rumble's uh, contact with the city. Uh, Cindy had played a really big part in as far as representing the council to put this together. We've <coughs> since then partnered with the uh, township of, uh, of Alpena. Probably the first time I can remember that this is basically a joint um, a joint proclamation that I'll read here shortly, and Nathan will join me uh, with the township. So if you want to go ahead, unless I stole all your thunder. <laughs> Basically, uh, <laughs> Tim Rumble's the contingent from the local bicycling uh, group. Uh, met with staff, Cindy was there, and we discussed the, uh, the concerns that they had, and, and the fact that um, you know, bicycles just don't get the, get the due that they are afforded, um, that they should be afforded out there in the public. So one of them was to try to get some additional education out there. Uh, we talked about a number of different options, and, and uh, Joel will talk about uh, what he's done. But we did uh, order six share the road signs. Um, basically shows bicycles and, and vehicles <coughs> utilizing the same travel area. And we will be putting those up, um, one on and one on Long Rapids near Oriel Intersection, uh, basically the entrances to the city um, or key intersections. Two, uh, one on Long Rapids, one on Johnson Street, either side of US 23, uh, one at the city limits on Long Lake Avenue, uh, one on Grant Street at Hobbs uh, as they come into the city and onto the bike path system. And then at Ripley and Mason, uh, coming in from the south. So we will be putting those up. Um, you will definitely see them. They're rather large, <laughs> and, uh, and they will be very visible. But it's, a, it's an avenue to get that, that education out there that the, the bicyclists and the, and the uh, motorists need to share that road space that is available. So, yeah, and just, just real quick. Um, as we say, it's basically an educational component for us right now, even though there's always going to be that enforcement aspect. 
uh, we're approaching this to educate the public as far as, and also the bike riders themselves. And so we're doing that in a number of ways. Uh, we're talking about um, probably one of the most beneficial links is from the League of Michigan Bicyclists. It's a very prominent group in the state, uh, very well known, but well respected. And they put out a, uh, a great website that has the rules of the road for the bicyclists and for the, the motors also. So uh, I talked to Steve, we're gonna be putting that on the city website. We'll probably be putting a link on the department website as well. Um, we also reached out to the um, primary uh, driver's education companies in the area and did confirm that, um, that that's part of their state required curriculum that the, um, is I mean, very compressed, mind you, but they do cover that with the students as far as their responsibilities for sharing the road with, uh, with uh, um, bicyclists and so forth. Um, and again, there's always that enforcement component for us, but we try, and like everything else, to educate first and then enforce afterwards. So that's what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Joel. Thank you. <laughs> First, I, I need to thank the city for their cooperation. And Councilwoman Johnson, I can't say enough for all that you've done to help bring this you know, to this point. And as a part of our hopes, the education is the biggest portion of this. And with with the help of the city, it's going to be something that you know, will certainly happen. So I'm very excited about that. Some of the things yet to come, you know, those, those around the table, but uh, what we're accomplishing here today, we're very grateful for. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tim. And I would just quickly like to say I'd like to thank staff because without staff, none of this would happen. So I would approach without the cooperation of staff, none of this would happen. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I think it's a uh, the more awareness we can spread, obviously, social media, uh, things of that nature, when we start seeing some of these documents come up, uh, we can share that. Um, uh, and again, uh, Township Supervisor uh, Skibby for, for partnering up with us. I'll uh, read the proclamation, and then um, at his meeting, I will um, do my best to uh, join him as well. So he has to read it. He has to read it, yeah. <laughs> Whereas the bicycle is an economical, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transport, transportation and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of the city and township of Alpena's scenic beauty. And whereas throughout the month of June, the residents of the city and township of Alpena and their visitors will experience the joys of bicycling through educational programs, races, community and charity events, or by simply getting out and going for a ride. And whereas the city and township of Alpena's road and trail systems attract bicyclists each year providing economic opportunities, transportation, tourism, and scenic benefits, and whereas creating a bicycle-friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health, well-being, and quality of life, growing the economy, attracting tourism dollars, improving traffic safety, reducing pollution, congestion, and wear and tear on our city streets and roads, and whereas local organizations, including the Northeast Michigan Cycling Coalition, Alpena Area Chamber of Commerce, Alpena Convention and Visitors Bureau, Parks and Recreation Departments, Police Departments, and civic groups will be promoting bicycles, bicycling during the month of June 2017, whereas these groups are also promoting bicycle tourism year-round to attract more visitors to enjoy our local restaurants, hotels, retail businesses, and cultural and scenic attractions. And whereas these groups are also promoting greater public awareness of bicycle safety and education in an effort to reduce collisions, injuries, and fatalities, and improve health and safety for everyone on the road and trails. And now, therefore, we, Mayor Matthew J. Walagora and Supervisor Nathan Skibby, by the by virtue of authority vested in us, do hereby proclaim June 2017 as Bicycle Awareness Month in the city and townships of Alpena, and encourage all residents to respect those who choose the bicycle as their preferred method of transportation and share the roadway. So, Tim and your group, if you'd like, and Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Michigan TNR group trapping, spilling, and moving abandoned cats. I'm so in on your. I know it's Cindy. Cindy Strobel. Cindy Strobel. Out, 
the dolphin produced and the diagram of that. There's been a, a statistics out there um, over a three-year period that shows the intake has, has dropped, and the inflation has dropped, and that's another one here. And what we think we can do this also. Kentucky has dropped 51% of intake. So that's just some um, nationwide information. Basically, this is, this is our logo, and there's been all sorts of information out on the internet about you know, how many cats get reproduced in natural life rats. So there's no natural enemies, you know, so they just keep reproducing it. A lot of them do get to buy cars, out in the fields, and stuff like that. You do have predators and kittens and stuff like that. It's the best way to live, but, you know. Yeah. But this is a, another one where if you keep track of their number and more so the information is the cat female is you know what age is it and um, male you know male female and you know then we also can negotiate sometimes when somebody says I got 15 cats and I really can't afford fifty dollars for them. So if we get a grant, then we'll say, you know, we have it figured out where either the vet will call us or if one of us go out to the site and see the situation and we can say, well we got a grant, we can give you twenty dollars per cap so you'll be only thirty dollars for you to do. So we have things to work out, but so far it's working. <laughs> this is the vet's Sheet. They basically say the date to come in, the certification number, and the description of the cat, and then what the customer paid from what we negotiated. Or we have people that are just willing to say, "Wow, fifty dollars is a, a great relief." So you know they're paying the whole fifty dollars. Uh, the three vets in the area, they all came up with the, they sat in, discussed it with us, came up with the process. On all the processes, and um, and they ultimately came up with the, the amount that they were going to you know, honor for the three-year period to see how this works. They said that we can continue if it's working well, um, but we did lock it into a three-year to see where we're at. And it's also trying to tell people, you know, you need to address this situation right now with your cats. Not don't wait. We're putting some information up. In local stores, and basically um, our website. That <coughs> we don't have a website, but having a problem getting it up and rolling. So we have a lot of people communicate by the um, the Facebook when it comes to a lot of our shelters are on Facebook and everything, and we've been getting a good response by people keeping up with that. So a lot of our communication is going through. Facebook. I do have a question that's coming up So basically, this is what the cat will look like. If the cat's, if the ears clip, they've been fixed, so um, they shouldn't be any issues when people start yelling that, you know, they're just going to multiply. Well, if they're fixed, they're not going to multiply. Um, they do get a rabies shot. One question that I did have, and I wasn't quite sure if it was the, um, who I would have to talk to, is, you know, this is a community thing. It's for the community. So if we want to set up an awareness table, um, I don't think we should have to pay for a cover fee for that. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk to the Chamber of Commerce or anything like that. I would like to be at the um, Elkin Fair, any art, art shows that's going on or street street things like that and um, that's that's the only that's the only request that I, we have is we want to any monies that we have coming in for this we want to go directly for to fix some yeah. I don't 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's probably going to be the actual event coordinator. Mm -hmm. The city certainly doesn't, and I don't think that the chamber organizes any anything on your list either. So okay. probably the actual, whoever's running it, like the farmer's market, would be like a J.B. Cook or somebody, whoever's on that okay. board so or runs it, or Art on the Bay and things like that. Yeah. Okay. We don't have we don't have one stop shop organizer for the. We'll probably take a, a volunteer if somebody wants to do that. Is there any questions from anybody? Basically, we're just looking for your blessing to make sure that it's okay that we're not you know. I know people we've talked to ran into some people that says you know I've been in trouble because I put out a cat shelter and stuff like that. Around and I see a lot of your parks, I don't think a cat shelter is a big deal, you know. I mean, well, um, and I attended your right. uh, one of your meetings. And I guess my con my concern is: are are you asking the city's permission to do this inside the city? Yes. But she doesn't need our permission. That's why I was hoping you'd see. The way I understand. We, we wanted to get in in November to see if it's it's last year, and yeah. we needed to start rolling this out. So. I don't have the book in front of me, but <clears throat> because it's technically trapping, there may be uh, some rules against it. That being said, we have, you know, there's a nuisance animal control people like Critter Gators, Haskins, some of those guys and gals that they're licensed by the DNR to trap specific skunks, possums, foxes, raccoons out of the city and we allow that. Mm -hmm. And I don't see you know, this could very well be the same thing. <clears throat> I will tell you, <clears throat> through code enforcement, I wish they were trapping them in the city because there's an awful lot of cats running around that mm -hmm. belong to nobody. I mean, I, I guess I had a couple concerns. Um, I'm not, I don't have a cat, but let's just say I had one and it was out roaming where it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be, quite frankly, our ordinance basically says that it shouldn't be, but you trap it and you fix it, and I didn't want it fixed because I was about to breed it or something. I don't know how that works. You should have it licensed. It should probably be licensed with a thing. So let's just say for argument's sake, if somebody followed all the rules and they had their license and a tag and a contact information <coughs> that gets into a trap of one of your volunteers, you're not just going to automatic. Will you automatically spay and neuter? Will you contact that person? No, if it's physically owned, you know, tags and that. No. In fact, what we have talked about is we, when we're going to be trapping in an area, we're knocking on doors and saying we're going to be trapping. Do you have cats? You know, because if they're out and if they're not, you know, if they're wandering around, um, we catch them and they're not fixed. I mean, they do fall into, you know, they're going to be mating. And so that's what we're trying to stop. They will come back with an ear clipped, and I don't really want to get anybody mad about that, but that is, I mean, that's, sure. you know. Yeah. I, I don't think Alpena County requires licenses to cash. No, they don't. Because yeah, of the farms and stuff, they would have to take up for so. Right. I wish they did, because you wouldn't have this problem. Yeah. The only thing, well, you could still go and do it, I believe. Uh, volunteer to do it, whatever. I mean, if you get a license, you got one, and it at least tells that who it belongs to well, because did, it would be registered. Yeah, we did have people, you know, talk about, you know, well, will I have this, let's just say, a cat that I was going to breed and everything? Well, a cat like that, I'm really not going to let out roaming, you know? Right. But yeah. I mean, really, really don't see people, you know, mm -hmm. we haven't ran into anything like that. I mean, we've been looking for a solution for this for Don and I have met Val with Val before um, about um, this kind of, you know, Val's, Well, this, this uh, really does work. I've um, experienced it from, it, it, it quiets them down. You, you don't really notice that they're there any longer. You know, they're not biting, they're not um, spraying and smelling up the area. They seem to calm right down. Right. And they're still there, so you still
still need people that are feeding them, but these are the people that are going to be feeding them anyhow. So, and then they just live out their life. Um, we've brought some into the shelters where we thought we could rehabilitate them and find them a home for them. Well, you can't. You know, they're they're like a raccoon, or they haven't had any socialization, and they're just they actually do pretty well on their own. I would uh, suggest, Mr. Mayor, that we uh, maybe refer it over to the city attorney or to the building inspector to re review the ordinance and get back to us with a, an opinion. Um, I think that'd be fair enough just in the event, because I can't say that I know all the policies and ordinances concerning trapping animals. So. I do believe we need to, I need to get a hold of the um, county commissioner to review the Some of these places that are contacting us are actually not in the city, they're in the county. Yeah. So. Right. And if, yeah, and if Bill wants to let us know. And then again, okay. because we're in the county, I don't know if they had anything that supersedes us or how that works. But it sounds like a, <coughs> sounds like a pretty good solution if, if there aren't any issues that we can't take care of. And the Humane Society is. Mm -hmm. um, there's no issues with how, no, how you're operating. Very aware, much aware of what we're doing. I assume so. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Very much aware. Okay. Great. Well, we appreciate it, and uh, I think where we'll leave it is uh, Bill will come back with a. Uh, somebody yeah. will contact yeah. you when Bill comes back with his opinion okay. on that. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay with you? Yeah, okay. I said within two weeks, so basically next week we can okay. issue that. Do you want to do a motion or something? Oh, you on, want the direction, on the direction for Bill? Yeah. Yeah, authorize the city attorney. Okay. So we'll move forward back at the Second. next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Walgora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you uh, next up is new business, the rental agreement with the canoe and kayak services at Duck Park. Rich? Uh, about four years ago, Aaron Rifel, um began and operating a canoe and kayak rental operation. I think she expanded into some other activities. Uh, but there was an agreement with the city of Alpena uh, within the Duck Park. Uh, she just this spring notified me that uh, she could no longer operate this rental operation due to other commitments. I think some small children kind of take up your time. So. <laughs> But she did. She did a wonderful job. He was always uh, very cooperative throughout that um, that rental agreement. Um, the city had two potential operators approach us about continuing the operation. During the discussion um, phase, one of the operators elected to withdraw from consideration. Um, Performance Locker he has worked with the city. Uh, we met with them and discussed it with them. Emailed back and forth some. Uh, variations on our rental agreement to develop the attached agreement and is working under a conditional we're working under a conditional up until if council approves it tonight to allow them to operate over the Memorial Day weekend um, so uh, Greg and I met and discussed it and then Greg did write a letter uh, authorizing them to do that provide that service the agreement is basically the same as the one executed with Aaron Rypel, but does include the potential for them to install a storage building in the future, and that would be with oversight of the city. Um, you know, condition, quality, appearance, etc., so that we would get Location. a quality looking structure down there. Uh, it's my recommendation to city engineer that the city council authorize the attached agreement with performance locker to allow them to rent canoes, kayaks, etc., out of the duck park. Or the Duck Park. Duck, dark Park. <laughs> dark Park? Dark Park. We the spell doing... check is a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> We're going to do and a dark... And the Stutzmans are both yeah. here. We're doing Dark Skies as well. well. Very best is the Dark Sky performance. No, I think, uh, you know, just a quick comment is uh, this has been uh, a great asset to the community, a great asset to that park. There's been a lot of activity. There's been many people now that I'm traveling to uh, Saginaw uh, sometimes that people in that area are aware of it. Uh, 
and uh, have heard of it and are coming up for that, that that adventure. So I'm very glad that you guys are taking this on. I appreciate it. process and, and trying to make that flow continue throughout uh, this year. We appreciate that you want to do it, so mm -hmm. that is a good community asset. Yeah, I think it's fine. Um, I had uh, and still have a bit of concern with the building. Um, I talked to the Stutzmans about that, um, and, and they're probably the best um, stewards of that type of thing as far as being aesthetically pleasing for the new bridge and the park and things of that nature. So I'm sure when that, uh, when that uh, arrives, we'll come to some, some agreement on what might look best there. So. We, uh, we have some options we've been looking into that we'd like to, at some point, when it's appropriate, share with council or bridge or the appropriate um, entities. Also working directly with the sanctuary park that kind of helps manage the aesthetics of their area. We want it to be something that's not going to take away, but add to. Um, our primary goal for looking into that is just from a logistical and business operations standpoint, it would make it easier for us to carry out operations there and potentially offer more rentals, more times, more areas, and just better serve that segment of the community. Sure. Thank you, Casey. No problem for me. Mm -hmm. Now we approve the agreement between the city of Alpena and the performance locker and Brazilian. Second. Second. Oh. I think she won. She got me. Wow. <laughs> Johnson? Yes. Quick. Nowak? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Walbora? Aye. Thank you. Uh, next up, Public Safety, second floor VAV replacement design services. Well, I'm going along with the uh, dark part. Also, uh, <laughs> I noticed a little glitch in uh, my two memorandums. One says I've known Aaron Modak for 16 months. The other one says 24. <laughs> the reality is 24 months. So I cut, copy, and paste thing. The City of Alpena has utilized the service of Aaron Wojak over the past few years to assist in design and implement, implementation of the HVAC improvements at the public safety facility, city hall, water treatment plant, and wastewater plant. I've been working with Mr. Wojak for the past 24 months on these various projects. I'm comfortable with his knowledge and willingness to work with the local contractors and suppliers. His knowledge of our buildings and working systems streamlines the services to maximize the dollars. Again, we're looking at design assist um, in this instead of full engineering service with everything we're trying to do. Um, to, to save dollars and take those dollars and put them into the project. The city is now looking at replacement of the second floor VAVs, including new controls. This project is an ongoing upgrades that have been in progress over the past few years. The first floor VAV units were replaced fall of 2016 with overall improved comfort levels. Some of the comments uh, I've received is it's the best it's been in years. Um, the attached proposal outlines the project scope uh, with the most noteworthy, the sleeping quarters for fire EMS. This, this area has been problematic with comfort and the individual cubicles. With design, we intend to provide some level of adjustment based on individual needs. Again, that's going to be limited, um, you know, without compromising the balance of the building, but at least we're going to try to afford something for fire EMS. So based on individual needs, they can have some type of control. It is my recommendation as assistant city building official that the city of Alpena contract with Spicer Group, Aaron Wojak, for design assistance service for the lump sum of $3,460. The 
funding for design services was included during the budget process for this for this project. Mike, uh, just a couple of questions, if I if I may. Uh, the first one with both of these, uh, this memo and the next one. Uh, this isn't obviously a system that you're putting in your house. This is not something that is just very simple to go into. And, and can you give a little explanation of, of, of why that we do this and, and maybe a little bit uh, better explanation of design and assist versus a complete engineering design? Well, the, the size, the scope of the project, the size of the building, just then with looking at city hall and looking at public safety, um, you know, versus Though there are some massive homes where there are probably multiple boilers and, and uh, air conditioning systems designed into them, we're, we're using a combination of uh, the boiler heat for warming the air that's coming into the building as well as, um, you know, moving that air with air conditioning and all, all overall design for the maximum performance. So just based on size alone, Trying to get all these things incorporated and working in unison is a is a feat in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you just again based looking at size of the buildings and just the scope of the job, um, you know we've got to balance things out and um, and also with controls uh, because again with all individual areas we want to make sure that the building you know meets the needs for those particular areas. I move we approve the contract with Spicer Group. Aaron, and, and please give me the pronunciation of his last name. Wojcik. Wojcik, okay. Uh, for the design assist on the second floor VAV replacement. Second. Noah? Yes. Sexton? Yes. Walgora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Okay, Mike, you're going to stay here for the City Hall Boiler Design Services. Okay, and essentially the first paragraph, unless you'd like me to read the whole thing. <laughs> Is it the second reading? Uh, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> As your boss. Uh, um, again, we're working with Aaron Wojak, Spicer Engineering. The city is now looking at the boiler replacement and the hydronic heat upgrades at City Hall, which are needed as the existing boiler was installed in 1998 and has already exceeded its life expectancy. Currently, some of the existing system is frequently supervised to provide adequate comfort in various areas of the building. The attached proposal outlines the scope and design service, but most noted that there will be, we will be installing two high efficiency boilers. Right now, we're served by one. This is allows better efficiency and continued service uh, should a failure occur, occur in one of the boilers. Uh, it is my recommendation as assistant city building official that the city of Alpena contract with Spicer Group, Aaron Wojak, for design assistance services for the lump sum of $6,600. Sufficient funding is available in the city hall but building, excuse me, building fund. No question. And again, uh, Mike, is the, the scope of the job. City Hall has a couple of extra dynamics. We've got baseboard heat units as well as makeup heat for our air handlers. We do have some issues with our zone valves, and so it's a constant. Uh, and our control system is, uh, I think, like I said once before, and I'm probably going to date myself a little bit. Uh, you know, Atari versus Xbox uh, is where we're at with our control system. So, um, so that's going to. You know, also be part of that along with the AV or HVAC yeah. system that we're upgrading. So. All right. Thank you. I was just going to have to do what Atari was. I don't know. So we're all too <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Mike was really good at that. <laughs> I move, I move we approve the uh, design and assist contract with Spicer Group and Herb Wozak for boiler replacement in the amount of $6,600. She's quick. I did it the last. Sexton? Yes. Walgora? Okay. Johnson? Yes. Noah? Yes. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I move we adjourn to closed session to discuss the city manager's evaluation and water sewer litigation. Second. Walgora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Noah? Yes. Sexton? Yes. 